Alright guys, what is going on today? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk about Boruto chapter 72. Now we've seen a bunch of stuff go down and from the looks of it, I think this chapter is starting to build up towards the next fight. So without further ado, let's dive into this chapter. Now a couple of things that came across my mind when reading this chapter is the talk between Kawaki, Naruto and Shikamaru. And from the looks of it, you can tell Shikamaru is kind of pissed off at Kawaki for how he's been acting. But at the same time, the main issue here is Kawaki. Have you noticed the way Kawaki's been acting ever since he got back from the code fight? He's been acting more cold hearted and more like Ishiki rather than he is supposed to be acting like Naruto. Now this throws me off because of Kawaki's development. If we watch the anime right now, Kawaki's development, he's actually making his way up. He's becoming more nicer, softer rather than him being his manga self. As we see here, he's calling Shikamaru worthless and useless. So he's basically talking shit to Shikamaru and Naruto's telling them to break it up. So that is something I've noticed when reading this chapter. Now looking at Kawaki himself, Kawaki doesn't seem that surprised that Amaro put the karma on him. If you read chapter 71 he was a bit more shocked he was a bit more open to Samiri about it but when talking to Naruto and Shikamaru he's a bit more secretive and he doesn't seem that bothered by the karma though Kawaki is saying Amato is probably dead and that he doesn't really care what happens to Amato at this point all he wanted to do was ask Amato why he implanted the karma but to the surprise of Naruto Shikamaru and Kawaki Amato is alive as soon as Shikamaru gets the phone call now this part here is really interesting during this phone call there's two things I want to point out the first thing being that Amato says it'll take them three to four days to get back to Konoha. So within those three to four days, some crazy she's about to go down. Right now, we have Code coming in with his army, and I think that's gonna happen during this three to four days period. Because Ida, Amato, and Damien can't fast travel to the village, unlike Code, who could just snap in and out of his belts, no problem. So those three to four days, Shikamaru's gonna be planning something. So when Amato tells Shikamaru that Ida's come to the village and that she's bringing her younger brother Damien, he's like, yo, that wasn't part of the deal. He gets pissed off at Amato. Amato's like, bro, you accepted her, you gotta accept her brother. And so Shikamaru is calling out Amato saying yo you can't be calling the shots here but I think this is all going according to Amato's plan if you read carefully what Amato is saying to Shikamaru mainly towards the end of their conversation he says be forward thinking Shikamaru code is stronger now for sure but he's no stronger than Ida and then in the next panel he says with Ida and Damon added to Konoha's arsenal code should be insignificant and then this is the part that really gets me when Amato says you're good with game pieces right well the rest is in your hands so I think this is actually a secret language between Amato and Shikamaru and and Shikamaru knows Amato can't say certain things without Ida listening. Because what really throws everything off is when Ida says to Amato, who are you calling game pieces? And Amato's like, it's a figure of speech that's effective with Shikamaru. He specifically says effective. That's what really threw me off at that moment because if you look at Shikamaru's character, he's a planner. He thinks far ahead just like Amato. And Amato is talking to him in a way where only Shikamaru can understand. Which is why later in the chapter, Shikamaru then summons Team 7. So that's Boruto, Mitsuki, and Sarada along with Kawaki and Naruto and Sasuke. So that's how you know he's planning something for those three to four days and most likely he might send out these guys to get rid of Ida and or get rid of Damon, possibly even go fight Code before Code even comes to the village. Because now Shikamaru knows that Code is a threat and he has his limiters off, he can attack the village anytime. And if what Amato is saying is true, that Damon and Ida are going to be powerful allies to Konoha, he knows he might as well stall Code for those three to four days until Amato gets here with Damon and Ida. And then if Code does decide to attack the village at that moment, Damon can stop Code at any moment. So that is why I think this conversation between Amato and Shikamaru is actually hinting us. Now, towards the end of the conversation, Ida gives a warning to Amato saying, I'm going to kill you if you don't make me and Kawaki get along here. Now, at this moment, again, Amato could be scheming something because Amato knows that if he doesn't get Kawaki to like Ida, she's going to kill him or Damon's going to kill him. So if Amato can control Kawaki, then he's going to program Kawaki or tell Kawaki to love Ida instead so that Ida and Damon don't kill him. Now, this part, in my opinion, this is important because I'm going to call this a foreshadow. I think Samiri is going to hijack Kawaki because Kawaki did open up to Samir last chapter regarding how Amato implanted him with the karma and that Kawaki needed the karma. She knows that Amato is now going to be scheming something else with Kawaki and she's going to want to protect him because she knows how Kawaki is and because her and Kawaki are alike, she doesn't want anything happening to Kawaki. So when Amato tries implanting something more in Kawaki, Samir is going to come and hijack Kawaki so that his plan falls through.
Now, one of the important chats in this chapter is Boruto and Hinata. Looking at this carefully, Hinata is actually worried that Boruto might not come back if he leaves the house this time. Because at this moment in time, Shikamaru has already informed Boruto and them that they have a mission. And Boruto is heading out. Hinata is worried that Boruto is not going to come back this time. So she starts crying. And you see Himawari listening to Hinata and Boruto. So then Boruto being optimistic as he usually is, he says, I'll be all right. He's like, I know I died that once, but I'll come back totally fine. And he says, I'll come home no matter what. This right here. I'm gonna call this right now when Boruto is out on a mission with Sarada Mitsuki and Kawaki That's when code is going to attack with his minions with his ten tail monsters Whatever those Frieza looking mofos are he's gonna attack with them and Boruto saying I'll come home no matter what I think this is a hint that Hinata is going to die and Himawari is going to die and half the village is probably going to die When these guys are out the village because if Naruto and Sasuke are up to something as well If it's all part of Shikamaru's mission, that means not many people are gonna be able to defend the village now I know some are gonna say we still have Konoha 12 bro those guys couldn't do anything against Ishiki what do you think they're gonna do against 10 kill monsters that are infused with code and code right now has his limiters off and he is stronger than Jigen and that Jigen whooped Naruto and Sasuke's ass so Konoha 12 ain't gonna do nothing if it comes down to it but getting back at the panel Boruto said I'll come home no matter what like I said it's two ways to look at it either his family's gonna die when he comes back or Boruto's actually not gonna come back he goes on this mission and this is the mission that leads him to go astray and whenever he's in that mission he may fall off and not return to the village up until the time skip when Kawaki destroys the village or whoever destroys the village. So I think that is the reason why they gave us this panel because we haven't seen Hinata cry in the Boruto anime or manga until like now. Like she does shed tears and all, but this panel was specifically put in here. Like they didn't show her back when Boruto was taking the pills, but they decided to show her now after Boruto dies and comes back. So this has to be a foreshadow that something crazy is going to happen with the Uzumaki family. And I think Boruto losing everything is going to be him losing his family members, which I'm going to get to in the next part because we have Momoshiki talk to Boruto. Momoshiki says, boy, your time's coming. And Boruto is shook. Boruto's like, nah, bro. So then looking at the panel, Momoshiki tells Boruto, he's like, let me ask you, boy, why do you cling to your meaningless existence? You know your future holds nothing but despair. So Momoshiki telling us that, that means Boruto is going to fall down a path where he's going to be really sad. He's going to be really hurt. And to prove that Boruto's despair is going to be even worse is what Momoshiki says next. He's like, you're going to lose everything. And when that time comes, I'm going to be the one who lives as Boruto Uzumaki in your body and you're going to be hidden in your mind somewhere in the corner. So what Momoshiki is trying to tell us here is that Boruto is going to get hurt so bad that he's not going to be able to show himself. He's going to hide in the back of his mind while Momoshiki takes control of Boruto. And I think what Momoshiki is implying here is that he can still take control of Boruto's body and that Boruto will look normal and no one will notice. That's why he says, I'll live out your life as Boruto Uzumaki. So I think when Momoshiki takes control, we're not going to see a Byakugan or a horn or anything. It's going to be the regular Boruto. Though I think the Byakugan is a 50-50. But if Momoshiki lives as Boruto and Boruto's actual soul is hidden in the back of his mind that just goes to tell you that Boruto is about to lose some crazy stuff he's about to go down a dark dark path and I do wonder when that moment's gonna happen because Momoshiki says the moment that you're gonna lose everything is rapidly approaching that's telling us that that moment is not that far away and I'm thinking that's gonna happen in the next 10 chapters maybe around chapter 78 to 80 because if the code arc starts back in January to February of 2023 then around the time that arc gets animated they might put the manga towards the time skip towards that moment and after the code arc's done, they'll come back to anime canon stuff. So that moment's approaching. I wonder what Boruto's gonna lose. In my mind, I think he's gonna lose his family. Those are the most important people. Though I don't think Sarada and Mitsuki are gonna die, but that is still a possibility because something could happen to Sarada, which allows Boruto to go down a dark path. Now, I'm not calling it a Borusara moment, anything like that. What I'm trying to say is that she's the only one that's mentioned Boruto's blue eyes, besides Momoshiki. So there has to be some sort of connection that if something happens to Boruto regarding his blue eyes, it's gonna have something to do with Sarada. Sarada, Himawari, and Hinata. So it's possible Boruto loses the closest people to him. So I do wonder what Boruto is going to lose. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. Because I think he's going to lose his closest people, like his family and Sarada. So then Momoshiki departs with a warning saying, I won't let you die ever again. He's like, you are my precious vessel. No one can have you. So then Boruto's like, I'll make sure you can never emerge again. You'll be the one to despair in the future. And Momoshiki's like, I look forward to it. So then at this moment, Momoshiki disappears. Sarada and Mitsuki come. And Sarada notices that Boruto is looking up in the air. She's smiling at first, thinking that Boruto's happy that they're going on a mission. But then she suddenly notices that Boruto's face is all serious. She notices a change in Boruto right away. And then Boruto at that moment screams out saying, I'm going to decide 
have my own fate. So what gets me is this next panel when Boruto says, oh yeah. In the Japanese translation, that actually says Shanaru. That's what both Sakura and Sarada say. So then Sarada calls him out saying, hey, that's my line. So I find that kind of funny how Boruto is taking everything of the Uchiha's. He's going to be wearing a cape like Sasuke, have a sword like Sasuke. He's going to take Sasuke's daughter, bro, and even taking the wife's phrase and taking his daughter's phrase. So man is becoming a true Uchiha. Now, what really gets me in this panel is what Mitsuki says. He says, even if he dies and comes back or becomes Atsusuki, Boruto will likely always be Boruto. This small panel is actually a foreshadow in my opinion. And I think this panel is telling us that no matter what happens to Boruto, he'll always be Boruto. And to dive deeper into that, this is actually true in a way where Boruto always says he's a shinobi. And Mitsuki is relying that same message again, saying no matter what happens to Boruto, he'll still be Boruto at heart. So in a way, Mitsuki knows what's going to happen to Boruto. And I think Mitsuki possibly knows Boruto's future because it has to be some sort of connection with Mitsuki, Tuneri, and Boruto and possibly Orochimaru as well. Because Mitsuki is the one who's seen the Jogen. He knows that's an eye nobody has ever seen on Earth. So it makes you question on what Mitsuki knows and what he has shared with Orochimaru. So then after that, we got a small panel of Hinata and Himawari. Himawari says to Hinata saying that she's going to become a ninja to help Boruto. And it is kind of true though. Himawari is in the academy right now. So she's aiming to become a ninja now. Though I do believe my idea that Himawari is going to die and Hinata is going to die. So she's probably going to become a ninja, but then she's going to be the one that gets taken away from Boruto since Boruto really cares about Himawari. So then we get the next panel. Boruto looks at his karma and he says, I won't let you do as you please Momoshiki. So that's Boruto hardening his resolve again, saying he's not going to let Momoshiki do whatever he wants to him. So Boruto's going to fight back and try changing his destiny. And Sarada and Mitsuki follow right behind him. Now we get on to some of the greasy stuff. This is not the juicy stuff, but the greasy stuff. Code goes to where the 10 kills is. Now, as I was saying in the chapter 72 spoilers, I wonder why Ishiki's symbol is still glowing. You can see that black mark there. I don't know why it's been glowing ever since Sasuke went to that dimension. Though there's no way to confirm or say anything about that black ball, it does make you question on what that black ball means. And I think that black ball still glowing after Ishiki's death, I think it still symbolizes that Ishiki will come back to life somehow. But we'll see what the future holds for that. Anyways, getting back into this. In this dimension, he brings Bug and Code tells Bug saying this is where the Ten Tails is and this is a dimension only space-time ninjutsu can open. Regular people cannot. And at this moment, Code decides to make an army with the Ten Tails and he puts his belt on the Ten Tails and makes small pieces of the Ten Tails. Because the Ten Tails is a whole chakra ball and basically when you squish it, you can make smaller pieces of it. As he gives an example of clay. When you squish clay, a bunch of clay gets scattered out of it. It comes oozing out. So that's what he's doing to the Ten Tails. He's making a little army infused with his own chakra and blood to make them his soldiers. And the reason why he's actually scattering up the Ten Tails is because he knows that Kawaki and Boruto are going to be able to get to the Ten Tails dimension. And if that happens, they can take the Ten Tails and possibly kill it or split it up into nine different tails. But he doesn't want them doing that. And so he decides to split it up, which is smart on Code's part because Code says Boruto and Kawaki don't have full control over space time yet. And if they get here, it'll be troublesome. And he knows Sasuke can't get into this dimension anymore. But I do think Code didn't think that far ahead. And I think when the minions do attack the village, I think Boruto or Kawaki are going to use one of the minions to open up a portal to the Ten Tails. And I think this is when Momoshiki actually comes out because Momoshiki's plan is to eat the fruit from the Ten Tails. And he says that he's going to find wherever Ishiki and Code hid the Ten Tails. So if Boruto or Kawaki get one of the minions, they can backtrack the chakra back to this dimension. And that is possible because Kawaki did open up a portal using his karma to find Naruto back in the Boro fight. So the same could be applied to these creatures. So Code here is smart and he's getting ready for the next war where he's going to unleash all these monsters on the hidden leaf and destroy everything that belongs to Kawaki. Now, one of the most important things I want to know about these panels with Code and Bug is the fact that Bug asks Code, why are you so relaxed? You just got your ass beat and how are you so chill and everything? Code then replies saying, isn't it obvious? Because things are actually okay. And then we see a panel of Bug's face and he looks kind of surprised and shocked. And then Code decides to switch the topic. So I think Code knew that Ida and Damon were going to betray him because Code even says, he's like, honestly, Damon's strength was unexpected. And he said he was outclassed, meaning he wasn't expecting Damon to be that strong. So in a way, Code knew that Damon and Ida were going to betray him. That's why he tells Bug saying, isn't it obvious? Because things are actually okay. Why would he say that? He just got his ass beat. He just lost the girl he likes. He lost everybody. And he's saying things are okay. That just goes to show you that Code was probably acting dumb this whole time. And he actually knew what he was doing. He was setting up the stage for the final show. So he planned it out to get his limiters removed using Ida and Damon. And so now that he can control the Ten Tails once he had his limiters removed, which is why he says, I couldn't put this many belts before, but now with my limiters removed, I can change the ten tails. That just goes to show you how strong Code actually is, and that this was all according to his plan. He wanted to get his limiters off, and this was the way to go through it. He 
pulled the Aizen and Amato. He thought 10 steps ahead. So then the last few panels, Code makes his 10 kills army, and then he puts his eyes on one of the soldiers who came through his belt. And what's funny is the soldiers themselves could use Code's belts. That means they could go in and out no problem. And if that's the case, imagine all these 10 kill creatures attack the village going through a belt. And that's basically going to destroy the village. And hence, I think everybody is going to die from these soldiers. So then Code has control of the 10 kill monsters and the chapter ends there. And that is it for chapter 72. Now, I'm not going to lie. I like this chapter, though in my opinion, it was a bit slow. Though I do believe this chapter is actually starting to something bigger. And the final fight is coming in the next 10 to 15 chapters. Though, I'm going to call the time skip being somewhere in the chapter 80s because now the stage is being set for Borto to get his ice car and for Borto to leave the village become a rogue all this is being set up properly and I do believe Borto will leave the village and Ida and Damon will be the ones in the village with Kawaki. Kawaki will live the life of Borto and he'll try having a romance with Ida because what I think is going to happen Ida's going to threaten Naruto. She's going to make everybody turn against Naruto if Kawaki doesn't love her. Though that goes against the idea of Ida Ida said she wanted to naturally fall in love with him but I think she's going to force his hand. I think she's going to purposely force Kawaki to love her and thus leading Kawaki down the darker path that we see in the time skip. So that is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think of this video. I like this chapter. I was a bit 50-50 on it. I'll be honest. After two months wait, I was expecting more information and more hype, but it was a bit slow. I'll be honest. Though I think chapter 73 to possibly 76 before Amado comes back, there's some serious she about to go down. So let's see what happens with this next mission that Team 7 is about to take with Kawaki. Let's see what happens in the next few chapters. So thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos to come.